I'm Mark Callian, Mr. Saltwater Tank, and this is Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. Goober LS1 from YouTube wrote in and wanted me to do a show on Kalkwasser, or Calc for short. So thanks Goober LS1 for the suggestion, whoever you are. And in this episode of Mr. Saltwater Tank TV, I'll be talking to you about Calc, its benefits, and how to use it safely and effectively in your tank. Because if you don't follow some basic steps, you can really screw things up with your tank by using calc. But luckily, these are very simple steps, and I'll show you how to use it safely and effectively. One of the secrets to having a thriving reef tank is to keep your tank's perimeters as stable as possible. Because the faster that your tank's perimeters rise and the faster that they fall, the more that your hard corals are going to get upset. So they're going to turn brown, they're going to have poor growth rates, and they can bleach out and die. And let me tell you, I've been down the path of having hard corals die, and it's no fun. It completely sucks. Just take my word for it. But luckily, calc is one of the cheapest and most reliable ways to keep your tank's parameters nice and steady. Now, how does it do that? Well, first we have to understand what happens when calc gets dissolved in pure RODI water. Dissolving calc in RODI water has three things happen for you. Number one, calcium ions are released, which raises the calcium levels in your tank. Number two, hydroxide ions are released, which raises the alkalinity. And number three, the pH of the water that calc is dissolved in goes way up. We're talking like up to 12. Now, since calcium is the building block of coral skeletons, by having more calcium in your water, you're gonna provide what those corals need to build themselves and get bigger. And let's face it, we all want more coral growth, right? Now, having alkalinity of your water Keeping that high is a good thing because the more stable that we can keep the alkalinity, the more happy that our corals are going to be. This is one of the hidden secrets about keeping hard corals, is keeping your alkalinity very stable. We're talking no more than a swing of one, uh, one measure per day. Even half measure is even better if you can get it to that lock solid. And having high pH can help as well because if your pH gets too, too low, then your corals can get stressed out. Now, I wouldn't be doing you justice if I didn't warn you that misusing calc in your tank can really cause lots of problems. I mean, it can kill everything in your tank. I've seen plenty of pictures of calc um, getting overdosed in tanks and everything turns white and the fish die. So there are just a couple simple steps that you need to follow to make sure you use it safely. And that's what I'll talk about with you next. First, never ever add dry calc directly to your tank. If you do, it'll precipitate out calcium. And that's the very thing you're trying to add to your tank. Calc first has to be dissolved in fresh water before it can be added to your tank. So how do we get this fresh water containing the calc into our tank? Well, there's three main ways that you can do it. The first one is via something called a calc reactor. And a calc reactor is just a cylinder tube with a little motor on the bottom that turns a stirrer. So as water comes in from your auto top off, the motor turns, stirs the calc, makes it go into solution, and then it gets dumped into your tank. Now, I don't like calc reactors for two reasons. Number one, they can be pricey. And number two, they only dose a saturated solution of calc. And I'll explain why that's a problem in a minute. The second way to get calc into your tank is via a drip line. The way this works is you set up a milk jug or like a Coke liter bottle on top of it, plug your drip line into the bottom, and then you let the other end drip into your tank. And you can vary the drip rate with a valve or by tying this in a knot. However, I'm not a fan of the drip line approach because it requires you maintaining another piece of equipment. And I'm a fan of the KISS principle. Keep it simple, stupid. I don't want to have to maintain another piece of equipment. Less is more in my world. I've got plenty of other things going on. The third way to get calc into your tank is my personal favorite, which is using your auto top off reservoir. Now, why do I like this? Well, number one, it's basically free. Chances are you already have an auto top off system running. And if you don't have one, you should go get yourself one. And you can check out my other show on auto top off systems so you know what they are. Now by putting calc in your auto top off reservoir, it lets you do a couple things. Well, number one, it's free, so there's no charge, which is always great. And number two is you can vary that concentration of calc in the reservoir. So why do I keep talking about varying the concentration of calc in your reservoir? Well, remember how I said that calc raises your alkalinity and your pH? Well, if you dose too much saturated calc solution, then your pH and your alkalinity can rise suddenly, which is not good for your tank. Remember, you're trying to keep everything as stable as possible. No sudden rises, no sudden falls. It's just a nice slow rise and fall of your tank parameters throughout the day. 
So if you run in a calc reactor, whenever your auto top off runs, you'll be dosing a saturated solution of calc, which can lead to those long parameter swings. So by dosing calc in your auto top off reservoir, you can set the concentration of calc that's right for your tank. So how do I find out what solution of calc is right for my tank? Well, here's how you do it. The first thing to know is that you don't want your pH to go up more than 0.02 whenever your auto top off runs. Now pH test kits can't measure such a small change, so you have to use a pH pen like this one or a pH probe on your controller to measure the pH change in your tank. Since two teaspoons per gallon is considered a saturated calc solution, I recommend you start with one teaspoon per five gallons and see how it affects your tank. If your pH swing is less than 0.02, feel free to go up. Now for my 100 gallon tank, I use four teaspoons per five gallons. Also, keep in mind you want to make any changes slowly, so try running a low concentration of calc for a week and see how your corals and your tank reacts. To mix calc in your auto top off reservoir, add the amount of calc that you'll be dosing and then add in your RODI water. Mix the solution by stirring or by shaking the container while you're adding your RODI water. Once the container is full, give it a couple good shakes and then leave it to sit for a couple hours so that any undissolved calc or any impurities go ahead and settle out. Put your top off reservoir next to your tank and wait until you hear your ATO pump kick on. Take a note of your pH reading and then wait until your ATO pump kicks off. Give it a couple of minutes so that the top off water you just put in your tank has a chance to spread throughout the tank and all the levels get stable again. And then take note of where your pH reading is. Remember, bigger than a 0.02 rise is too much. As you run a more concentrated solution of calc, you're going to notice a white sludge looking substance, this stuff starting to form on the bottom of your container. Now, this is not a problem, but you don't want this sludge getting into your tank. You want the nice, clear, concentrated solution that's sitting right above it. So the way that you make sure that the sludge stays and the solution goes is you run your ATO line, the line going to your top off pump, and you have it sit right above the sludge line. That way, the clear solution gets pulled off and the sludge gets left behind. One of the false rumors you hear about using calc is that if you leave the solution exposed to air, that it'll break down or lose its potency. And there's some merit to this, and calc does break down a little teeny bit when it is exposed to air, but the amount is so infinitesimally small, you're not gonna notice any loss of potency. When used correctly, calc is one of the best additives for your reef tank. In fact, I say calc is king when it comes to additives for your tank because it's cheap and the results you can get from using it correctly are outstanding. Just remember to start using it slowly and keep an eye on how your tank reacts. So that's how you use calc in your reef tank. If you have questions, write to me in the comments below. And if you have any requests, send those to me at requests at mrsaltwatertank.com. I'm Mark Callahan, Mr. Saltwater Tank. This has been another episode of Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. Until next time, know your tank personality, enjoy your tank, and have a good one.